Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing a few mistakes that we have made or could have made with Frankie, our Aussie doodle. We got a lot of questions and interest on our video with her before. Um, so I thought it would be fun to take some of the questions and some of just the things that we've learned um, in the last couple of months and do a video on 10 mistakes not to do with your Aussie doodle. Does that make sense? Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first mistake is um, not to wait until you're taking her to the vet or to the groomer to put her in the car. Um, so we just kind of take her everywhere that we can go. And right now it makes it even easier because with COVID, we don't both usually go into the store um, and things like that. So it's been easy, I think, for us just to do that. But we take her, you know, to the store, to anywhere um, really that we go. And she loves the car. And I think that's why, because we have just always taken her with us and she got used to it at a really young age. So don't wait until you're taking them somewhere they don't want to go because um, then they'll just connect that with the car and then not like the car, if that makes sense. Um, the second mistake, or um, I guess these are kind of tips and mistakes. I don't know, just things we've learned. So I don't want to say this is a mistake, but we did get a wireless fence. Um, I might have gotten it a little sooner. Maybe that was the mistake part. But anyways, we got a wireless fence that is, um, and I showed it in our day in a life um, video too, but it just is a little device that goes in her basement and it projects like a circle around her house. And this is her um, collar. The only thing is that the battery dies quite a bit and you have to buy like a two pack of these batteries. And I think this is around $10. So that's the only con. I would say the battery lasts like two weeks. So that's just another thing to add to your budget. But with having two kids, like just being able to open the door and let her go outside and play has been such a lifesaver. I definitely recommend getting one, even if you just have the one we have. Um, because we um, have a smaller yard, but if you have a bigger yard, I don't know, you might need to get the whole fence thing and like dig and put an actual wire in the ground. But the one we have works great. I will link it. I will link everything I talk about in this video in the blog post with this, um, which will all be linked in the description. Um, the next one is, so vet trips and bugs and sickness and all kinds of things, you have to just like assume something's gonna happen because it's really common for puppies to get sick or to get parasites, which is what she had. Um, and we really didn't, we weren't prepared. So just kind of prepare yourself for that just in case it happens. Um, we had to make multiple trips to the vet. She had to get multiple medicines. She ended up getting like more than one parasite. Okay, so, what was I saying? Um, so just kind of prepare yourself for that. It was expensive. We had a, to get a few different medicines and um, I just read like after the fact, I wish I would have read this before, but you can put um, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar into their water bowl every day and that kind of creates a home in their um, digestive system or tract and intestines, I guess, that parasites do not like. So it kind of will prevent or it's supposed to prevent parasites from happening. So you can try that. Um, so brushing, we brush her, <laughs> did you know I was going to talk about that next? We brush her, um, I would say every day, at least every other day, um, just because she has the wavy poodle-ish hair, and so it can be prone to getting mats. So we took her for her first groomer's appointment, um, be gentle, quite a while ago now, she's almost due for her next one, but we took her in and they said we had done a good job of like making sure she was brushed and just maintained really because their hair can get kind of snaggly and she does need to get haircuts. Um, we are going to take her, I think, try every six weeks and see if that works. She has more of a wavy than like ringlet curls, so she can go a little longer if we do brush it. Um, but any doodle or dog mixed with poodle is going to be a little bit more high maintenance when it comes to grooming. Um, okay, so grooming was next. So basically, um, all that I said before, make sure you're maintaining. Um, make sure that you take your puppy as soon as you can or as soon as the groomer um, allows and even if it's just to get their nails trimmed or something simple but get them like acquainted with and used to going to the groomer because the longer you wait and the older they get the harder it is for them to like adapt to going to the groomer because it's a process it takes her like three and a half almost four hours um, so I'm glad we took her as soon as we could but also COVID has made things weird so I don't know it's just hard to be, it's hard to make an appointment. It's hard to get in. So just have that in the back of your mind and like make your appointment as soon as you get your puppies. So that maybe if you have to plan it like four weeks out, you're just prepared. Um, the next, uh, tip or mistake is to make sure that you train. What are you doing? Be, be gentle with it. Um, so 
Poodles and Australian Shepherds are super smart dogs, and so she has so much potential. Um, she knows the basic tricks and stuff, but she, like, I feel like she could do some cool tricks, so we might get into that later, but make sure you have enough time to spend with them in training because it's something that they want to do. Like, Aussies are just driven to, like, um, please you and to just do what you want them to do and to be trained, and Poodles are super, they're easy to train, and so make sure you spend a lot of time on that, or not even a lot of time, just... Uh, just a small amount of time each day on it um okay next thing is crate training did I forget to show anything so far oh so with grooming I was gonna share a few things as I go and I forgot so with grooming and brushing we have two different brushes this is just like a um I don't know like a regular it's a, not stiff or anything it's pretty flexible just like a regular this is a person's hairbrush um but I, we have this, and this kind of just gets all the snags out and kind of just combs it. And then I also have this brush, which this is a Burt's Bee brush, and it's a sharp. I can't think of the name of these right now, but this one we have also. And I will just warn, like, this is sharp. So when they're super little, I don't recommend using this. Um, it can irritate their skin, especially if you do it too much. But just be gentle with this kind of brush. But I like this because it kind of just, like, fluffs her more. It, it like really gets all of her hair, if that makes sense, and does a better job, but they're kind of dangerous and sharp. So I also use this kind of in between. It's Burt's Bees as well. It's just a waterless uh, shampoo. So I don't know, kind of the same concept of a dry shampoo for people, but it just kind of smells um, good. It balances their pH and it's good for like in between. Um, she just gets that, you know, dog smell. So that kind of helps with that. Um, did I miss anything else so far? I don't think so. Okay, the next thing I have is um, crate training. So we did we waited like a week or two before we started crate training her, and we should have just started right away. She did really well with it, um, and it's just, I hands down 100% recommend doing it. It's amazing because she likes it. It's her just like safe little spot, and we get like peace of knowing she's not chewing stuff up when um, we're sleeping, or if we leave, we also put her in the crate for leaving for just like a couple of hours. But um, I definitely recommend doing that. I talked about this before, but there's a um, account on Facebook, Hypothesis or something like that. I'll try to put it here. Um, but it, he has like good short training tips. And one of the ones was for crate training. And it's kind of just like a gradual. He does like positive reinforcement and just redirection kind of training. And he's really good. But it helped with her um, in training. She did well in general anyway, but... It was pretty helpful um, but just do treats treats she reacts really well to treats in training and different things so the next thing I have on my list is to buy good toys um, and we just I was excited so I signed her up for BarkBox right away um, and they do have the best toys like and they are you looking your treats and they send you treats too so you get like two bags of these really good treats and this one is a I don't know oh lamb um and they're always different the toys can you hand me some of the toys so i can show them this one is like a little hat there was a paris themed box but they're all squeaky crinkly really good toys and she hasn't like chewed them up can you hand me the other one? Oh, there's one don't give her too many treats okay this one is like a macaroon i brought her favorite so this is like a smaller one she likes that because she can just grab it easy can you hand me um that one down there that little girl one there was like a purse toy in one of them, which is super funny and cute. And this meow, one, meow, 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 it's like meow. a cat, but I guess that they all squeak. And I bought her a toy from Home Goods the other day, and she chewed it and ripped it within an hour. Um, and she has never ripped one of these. So anyways, just buy good toys. Otherwise, you're just going to be cleaning up fluff and squeakers and stuff all over the floor. Last tip or mistake is that we didn't set up a place for her to like get baths. Um, and it, when she was younger, especially, she would get more dirty and like play um outside and get more dirty i guess but so now we just have a designated bath we have a handheld sprayer which i highly recommend getting there i got a cheap one for like 20 bucks on target's website i'll try to link um everything that we have but i definitely recommend getting that and we also have a space set up just in the front where our hose is right by the front door um so that we can clean her off after she digs or gets dirty if she's too dirty to even bring her inside. And that works really good, you just hose her down. That works, but just have that just ready um, so that in case something like that happens, you're just prepared. I think um, one of the main things is just being prepared for things, like, cause they get into stuff, they, 
um, get dirty like puppies are just like kids. So having kids actually helped us in being more prepared because a lot of the things in our house is already like toddler proof and baby proofed. So um, that helped. And also just like having the simple things that will make your life easier, like the sprayer, um, just like having this fence that we have, the wireless fence. Um, I don't know. This is just all things that have helped with us. And we are still new in all of this. So if you have any tips for us, please let us know in the comments because um, every day is a different challenge. Not every day. She's getting easier, but she is. It's just a lot more work than we all thought it was going to be. But she really is a good dog and she's good with the all she's good with the kids she's good with all of us she's a really good family dog i highly recommend aussie doodles um even australian labradoodles which are a little bit different um but our neighbor has one of those and a bunch of people we know have those and they are really good dogs as well yeah good girl oh another thing we use these uh wool dryer balls and these are good dog toys too um she has just started like to figure out she can really chew them up, but they are good um, just toys for around the house too. One more thing that I forgot to mention is um, a mistake that we still haven't fixed yet is do not have white sheets and white bedding with the dog, especially if you're gonna allow the dog up in the bed. That's like probably our first mistake, <laughs> but um, her paw prints are all over the bed all the time. We have to definitely get different color sheets. It's terrible to keep clean, but that is my other tip. I think that is it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know as always in the comments. Um, and again, there will be a blog post with this with all the links to things that we have and use and leave your suggestions too. If anything I talked about, you're like, I, should, I would do this or I would do that. So I'm always open to suggestions. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.